Hi, it's John Porter, founder and CEO of Barter Pay. We uh, have the honor of sitting down today with uh, Graham Dargavel, who's the Director of Community Development for Jillian's Place uh, in St. Catharines. Uh, welcome, Graham. Hi, John. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's, it's awesome that we've been able to connect this way. And thanks to Kezia for setting this up. Really appreciate that. So tell us about Jillian's Place, Graham. Uh, I know that you guys do some amazing uh, work there uh, all across the Niagara region, but maybe just give us a quick overview of, of what Jillian's Place is all about and uh, how you're impacting the community. So we are working to end gender-based violence in Niagara. And so at Jillian's Place, we're much more than just a safe shelter that we are. We have 34 bad emergency shelter for survivors along with their children um, uh, who are facing violence and abuse in our community, but we offer a lot of services um, to the entire community. So um, practical, compassionate support services designed to meet individuals who are experiencing um, abuse when and where they're at in their journey to safety and independence. Amazing, amazing. It, it's uh, it's unfortunate that you sort of need to exist, but at the same time, it's such a, a blessing and a, and, a, and a help and encouragement and support to those uh, women that, that need you. Tell us about your flagship event. Like I see it everywhere, obviously, because I'm from the Niagara region, but the, I think one of your flagship events, correct me if I'm wrong, is the walk a mile in her shoes. Maybe just yep. give us a quick little uh, overview on, on what that's all about. Absolutely, it's two weeks away. So John, you could uh, register and walk. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, Walk a Mile uh, in Her Shoes is our largest fundraiser. It's raised over a million dollars and it's been, this is its 16th year in Niagara. Wow. Um, obviously last year um, due to the pandemic, we pivoted and went to, to a virtual virtual walk. We called it Walk a Mile COVID style. Um, nice. And we uh, included everyone to walk. So not just a men's march, it was uh, we knew the demands on our services. Sadly, because of the pandemic, we needed everyone to walk and uh, had a great success, raised over $105,000. And so this year it's walk a mile your style. So your people, your walk, your impact. And uh, we're really excited about it. And our goal this year is 120,000, but we already have 119 walkers registered. So really excited for Saturday, October 16th. Wow, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. It's such a great uh, event. And it, I know it gets a lot of attention in the, in the community and uh, it's a lot of fun too, right? Uh, for for these, especially these guys that have been uh, putting on the, the hot pink, uh, pumps and, and taking a walk around the block or whatever they're choosing to do. So that's awesome. Jillian's Place is one of our, our go-to charities in terms of support from the Barter Pay It Forward Foundation. We all know that these barter credits are, are generated by our amazing real life superheroes, which are the business clients themselves, uh, the 4,500 business, businesses across Canada that you know choose to uh, barter their spare capacity, their idle time and space, their idle inventory. They earn these barter credits. They use them for themselves to grow their own business, but they're also starting to generate significant, significant amounts to our foundation, the Barter Pay It Forward Foundation. And from there, we disperse out to charities and so far uh, Jillian's Place has been able to receive about 35,000 uh, barter credits for its own use um, and to be able to offset admin and overhead costs. If you could just talk to us about some of the things that you've been able to get through through the barter pay system. I, I looked on your account over here on the screen and I'm seeing a lot of printing and, and you know maybe it's banner stands maybe it's uh, you know whatever it is uh, things that you need for, for marketing and promotion and fundraising efforts but maybe you could just chat about uh, what you guys have been able to get through the barter pay system. For sure so uh, with Walk a Mile in mind we um, obviously especially when we're adapting the event every year due to the ever-changing pandemic um, we really rely on barter pay and the amazing thing about um, our signature fundraiser while it raises upwards of a hundred thousand dollars every year um, if you look at the cost of fundraising and our expenses um, that go into that event they're actually quite low and something we're very proud of and certainly um, especially when we've had things to adapt the event every year um, this last couple of years the relationship with barter pay and those barter pay credits certainly help um, We've been producing lawn signs, which are um, a pretty big uh, cost, uh, but on barter, they're quite affordable for us and really help uh, spread the word about the event. So certainly um, helping our signature fundraisers. Uh, we've had a designer hand bag bingo pre-pandemic and we uh, purchased a lot of our um, designer purses uh, through that. Again, helping bring those event costs down and more revenue um, and direct support to our agency. Yeah. And then this past year, we uh, undertook a pretty major overhaul of a rebrand of our organization, new logo, new website, um, and a brand that reflects and is inclusive and welcoming of all um, women, children, trans, non-binary, and two-spirit people um, facing violence in, um, in our community. And so, uh, you know, we really had to purchase a lot of new print materials like you've mentioned and the cost of that is very large for an organization but again barter pay um, just helped us keep those costs in line and uh, we're very proud of the brands that uh, and the products that we have. Wow yeah. it's, it's uh, I, you're, I think you're my fifth or sixth interview that I've done and every single time I know that 
I'm going to hear kind of the same type of message, this reduction in admin and overhead that's very important to charities. And uh, I literally get goosebumps every time I hear it. Honestly, it's, uh, it's great to hear these stories and the impact that, that we can have and that, that our members are having on these charities in the community that are doing this fantastic work. And so what a great list. Uh, most donors that donate to a charity uh, like to see their precious cash donor dollars, donor funds go straight to the end cause. They don't, it's not sexy to have it go to signs or printing or office furniture or rebrand or you know uh, building maintenance or whatever the case may be. But those are necessary expenses in order for the organization to uh, function and to grow and to raise support. So it just seems to me that it's, it's such an important uh, part that barter pay can play in the process because we're actually, we're focusing on the admin and overhead and not necessarily the end cost. Um, but it all plays into the same pocketbook, the same bank account. So uh, shifting gears again towards the impact. So, you know, it's nice that 35, 40,000 barter credits have, have flown, uh, have gone from our foundation over to Jillian's place, which results in about 35 to $40,000 in cash, you know, savings that can be redirected to the end cost. What does that mean? Like, what's the impact that an extra thirty-five thousand dollars cash can have for Jillian's place? Like, is it is it more, you know, being able to intake more people? Is it hiring another counselor? Is it more counseling hours? Is it like how, how does that all work uh, in terms of the in terms of the net cash savings? Um, so we are partially funded uh, through the Ministry of Children, Community, and Social Services, um, but you know, about thirty percent of our operating budget every year um, is reliant on support from the community, um, and we're always strapped, um, you know, in terms of funding, especially a few of our priority programs, our legal program, um, our second stage family program, and our education and violence prevention programs, they don't receive um, enough government funding. And so we know that every year we have to sustain those programs ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, an extra $35,000 certainly um, helps us. And just in the pandemic alone, we've had so many unforeseen costs um, um, and challenges where we've had to hire additional staff, extra cleaning staff, extra kitchen support staff, and now extra um, direct service uh, support staff too, because mm -hmm. the demands on our service. So extra yeah. $35,000 is never turned away and is put really to really good use. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It just gets stretched and magnified and amplified in every aspect, especially through this last 18 months of these added expenditures. So that's amazing. This all just doesn't happen magically. I mean, uh, you're, you're a busy guy. Um, we've got uh, your whole team, the whole Jillian's Place admin team, uh, support team, whatever. You're all busy. Uh, in fact, charities are pretty stretched when it comes to personnel and, and you know hours that they can put into the organization to get the job done. Um, how important is it that, you know, although barter pay is kind of a technology and it's transactional and there's barter credits flowing around, but we really pride ourselves on having this human to human relationship with what we call the barter coach. And your barter coach, I mean, maybe you've dealt with a couple of people there in Niagara. I'm, I'm assuming Mark, Mark Redkers and also now more recently Susan Olson. And so how important is it to have that person to lean on that can help navigate the barter system, can sort of be an extension of your team to help you, you know, source those things that you need to offset those costs so that you guys can continue to focus your efforts on the core, the core cause. So amazing, you know, it's so easy just to fire off an email, say this is what we're looking for, and they come back to us uh, quite promptly with, um, you know, answers for us. So it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah, it's it's an it's an amazing system that that allows all these charities just to like you know lean on that person, and um, we're there to serve, right? We're, we're our coaching team is there just to get that wish list to present you with ideas and to uh, work together to to make sure that we're conserving as much cash and stretching those uh, donor funds as as far as they can go. So you're in a room, Graham, with you know four thousand five hundred small business, medium sized business owners. Uh, who are who make up the greater you know barter pay ecosystem? These businesses that are you know bartering and trading their spare capacity and donating those those barter credits to our foundation, which get dispersed. What what's something that you would say to, to that group if you had a couple you know a minute to, to, to talk to them a couple sentences on that in that regard? I just want to, on behalf of Jillian's place, express my heartfelt thanks uh, for their um, action. It's amazing to see what you know collective action um, from all sorts of small businesses can do. Um, and it really is having an impact in the Niagara community and to some of those survivors of gender-based violence. Jillian's Place helps over 7,000 individuals every year, and all of you who are uh, associated with Barger Pay are helping. Mm -hmm.